Hey everybody and welcome back to Core Fundamentals of Web Development. We're going to sneak one more video in here to do a little bit of cleanup of our application before we move on to the course wrap up. So let's go ahead and dive in. So a couple of things that we can uh, clean up a little bit. First of all, uh, we originally started with gener or writing out this, uh, this static HTML for one uh, link. This is actually, it's fine to leave it because it ends up getting removed when we call display links initially and then it takes our dummy data here and it goes ahead and writes that in um, on top of what was already here. But we don't need this stuff anyway so removing this and saving it you'll see this stuff will still load the exact same way as it was. Now the second, second thing I want to do, just to give a little bit of shout out to the people, some of the people that I referenced in the intro video, I'm going to update our uh, initial dummy data of links and I'm just gonna paste some stuff in here. So I'm referencing here uh, three of the people that I follow most in web development that I've learned the most from over the past couple of years and it's Wes Boss, all of his courses on ES6, Flexbox, React, Node, awesome stuff, uh, free and paid depending on which one you're looking at. Traversy Media, his YouTube channel has free content on all different topics that you can think of. If you can think of a topic in web development, he's probably done a video to cover it. I think he tries to put out a video every day, and I don't know if it's quite that much, but it's a ton of great content that's pretty fr that's free. Uh, and then there's Colt Steele, and Colt Steele, his um, his course on Udemy was really the 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 thing that got me started in web development. The reason that I'm here today teaching you guys uh, core fundamentals of web development. So I just want to say that just to give them a little bit of a shout out here to represent them on on the page. These are just people that that have uh, I've learned a lot from and love to love to support them any way I can. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, and I think this is actually going to be the last thing that we do in this video, is update uh, right here where we've got our our dates printed out. These are pretty ugly, um, and I kind of glossed over this initially. So let's uh, let's really inspect what this is. When we do, let's come in to the developer tools and open up our console. And I don't know if you guys know this, but we can actually type directly in this console JavaScript. So if we do uh, var uh, name equals James and then get name, it'll print out James. So you can do basically just raw JavaScript in the console. So I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the date functionality. Right now, when we are going through and displaying our links, we're dynamically generating um, a string from date.now. So what date.now does is it basically gives you this string that really doesn't make a lot of sense just by itself. So let's take a look at, if I do uh, var date equals uh, a new date object, and I print out date, uh, this is what it gives me by default. So we don't quite want all of this information here. We don't want all of that. We want to basically just get the uh, month, date, and year. And even those things by themselves get slightly complicated. But the basics are, uh, you can call a couple of functions on here. So if I'm looking for uh, date, month, I can call get month. And it's going to return zero here. We're in January. What this does is it returns an, uh, an index, a zero-based index of what the month is. So we really want to do get month plus one. It's going to give us our month. And then the date dot get uh, day is going to give us uh, five. So it's January 5th day. And then date dot get year is going to give us something a little bit weird here. And what I'm going to do is just get full year. And that should give us 2018 because we just started uh, the new year just a few days ago so I hope you guys are having a wonderful new year and are celebrating by uh, going through the course here. So this is how we're going to get the basic information. Now one of the things that you'll notice is that date.getMonth uh, plus one and date.getDay, they're giving us one digit even though usually we'll look at a, a two digit representation of a month and day. So for example for January 5th you'll have 01 slash 05 and then your date, your full, or full year of 2018. So one of the ways that we can we can solve this is by creating a string. So let's start with our let's start with our get day, and let's bef let's add on a string of zero to this. All right. So if our date dot get day returns a single digit, then we'll get back the string of zero five. Now let's say that our get day was eleven. So let's say string of zero plus eleven print that out, we get 0111. So we can actually take 011, we can add this, this starting zero string to the beginning of this, and then we can call the slice function on it, since it's a string, and give it a slice of negative two, 
and it's gonna return the last two digits. So if, if when we add the zero string to the get day or the get month, what's gonna happen is, first of all, it's gonna convert the get day to a string because it's gonna take a string plus a integer or a number and it's gonna basically call that a string. So we'll get zero plus whatever the day is. And if the day is a single digit, we'll get zero five. And if I look at zero five slice negative two, we get exactly what we're looking for. And if it's actually a two digit, two digit day, we're basically creating a zero before it and then the two digits of the day. And then slice will go ahead and just get the last two digits. So again, the way slice works here is this, this parameter is telling you where to start and your second parameter parameter would be where to end your slice and since there's no second parameter what it's going to do is it's going to start at negative two which is starting from the back so negative one negative two and then it's going to go all the way to the end of the string and that's going to be what gets selected so by doing this we get our two digit two digit day and month so to work with this I'm going to come down and create a function and I'm going to call it format date and it's going to take in a date and what I want to do is return a template literal and we're going to have a couple of things here. We're basically going to have our month slash our date, our day slash, and then our year. So year is easy. It's going to be date dot get full year. That's pretty straightforward. Then we're going to have to do uh, some of this slice over here that we did before. So one is going to be, uh, let's actually, before we do that, let's save this. So I've realized we've got a small error here. You guys probably already picked up on this. Uh, inside of our template literals, it's looking for uh, some sort of JavaScript thing, a string or JavaScript variable, something to, to work with, and it didn't have anything, so it gave us an error. So if we save this right now, uh, we should be back where we were. We got our slash slash 2018. Now what we want to do is when we come in and create each of our links, so let's scroll up to the uh, submit button. For each of our links, we want to add another property, and that property is going to be a uh, date and then we'll just uh, give it a new date so we've got this happening for each of our dummy objects dummy links up here so there's a new date now for each one that we create after that it'll get the same thing as well and so then when we go to display them instead of just spitting out the date dot now so instead of spitting out the time that it's actually loaded we want to go and grab the date property of our link and spit that out and if we save this, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. It's going to show the actual date there. And one other thing we can do, we can call our format date, so format date on the link, on the link date property, on the date property of the link. So we'll save this again. And now we're getting our slash slash 2018. So that's what we are kind of expecting. Now we need to fill this in, first of all, with the month. So it'll be date.getMonth. And we actually want to do that plus one since it's a um, since it's zero based index. And now we should see a zero here for, or actually, sorry, a one for the month. But then we need to add the preceding zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this date.getMonth plus one in parentheses. And then we're going to add the zero before it so zero string to it then we're going to wrap that whole thing wrap this whole thing here in parentheses and then call the slice with a negative two as the parameter and hopefully this will give us a two digit month here so there's zero one that looks good and then we'll do more or less the same thing here for our date so it's going to be our zero plus date dot get day and we'll need to wrap that in parentheses as well. So there's there would be the two or three digit uh, string. And then we'll slice out to just make sure we get the ending to uh, two digits there. So let's see if this works as well. So we should get 0, 01, 0, 05, 2018. Um, and that's going to do it for uh, the dates. Now, I said this was the last thing. We've got one more thing we're going to do. And it's going to do in our link. We're going to do a link, uh, let's see, we're going to add just a small hover effect, so link, hover, and we're going to give it a box shadow, uh, zero pixel, zero, uh, three for the blur, and then our main accent for the color. All right, save this, 
And now when we hover, we should get a little bit of an effect there just to tell you which one you're hovering on. So that's gonna do it. Uh, again, I snuck one more video in here just to do a little bit of cleanup. I still want to do some bonus material, so I'm looking for feedback from you guys. What would be cool to see? What are you guys interested in? Uh, what would be kind of the next features that we could add to this application that would be useful for you guys? So if you got any suggestions, comment below, subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we've got our wrap-up coming up next, and we'll talk about what we did, and we'll talk about why we did it, and what that really means. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.